Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel The Intellect Zone. So this is the sixth video or rather the second part of the fifth chapter of our O-Level Computer Science Lecture Series. The fifth chapter is named Input and Output Devices. Make sure to go through the first part of this chapter in order to obtain information about input devices. In this video we will be going through all the output devices under this chapter. So without any more further delays, let's top into this chapter. Well, the diagram presents all the output devices that we will be going through in this video. The first output device that we will be going through is the inkjet printer. The inkjet printer is made up of a print head, an ink cartridge, a stepper motor, a belt, and a paper feed. The print head consists of nozzles which spray droplets of ink onto the paper. The stepper motor and the belt moves the print head across the page from side to side. The paper feed automatically feeds the printer with pages as required. The ink cartridge contains the ink that is to be sprayed onto the paper. All these points presents the structure and function of an inkjet printer. Moreover, there are two technologies which have been used to produce ink droplets. These technologies are named thermal bubble and piezoelectric. Let us start off the discussion with the thermal bubble technology. In this technology, tiny resistors are used to create localized heat which makes the ink vaporize. This causes the ink to form a tiny bubble, as the bubble expands, some of the ink is ejected from the printer head onto the paper. When the bubble collapses, a small vacuum is created which allows fresh ink to be drawn into the printer head. This continues until the printing cycle is completed. In the next technology piezoelectric, a crystal is located at the back of the ink reservoir for each nozzle. The crystal is given a tiny electric charge which makes it vibrate. This vibration forces ink to be ejected onto the paper, at the same time more ink is drawn in for further printing. Well this is a general idea about the two types of technologies that are used to create ink droplets for an inkjet printer. Let us now go back to the discussion about output devices. The next output device is the laser printer. The laser printer uses powder ink rather than liquid ink. This printer also makes use of the properties of static electricity to produce the text and images. Laser printers are faster than inkjet printers as they print the whole page in one go. Well this is a simple definition about the laser printer. Now let us go through 3D printers. A 3D printer is used to make solid physical objects that work. These solid objects are made with the use of computer-aided design applications. The solid object is built up layer by layer using materials such as powdered resin, powdered metal, paper, or ceramic powder. All these points give us a thorough explanation about the 3D printer. Now let us go through 2D and 3D cutters. Both these output devices are used to cut solid objects. A 3D cutter can recognize and cut an object in the XYZ direction. A 2D cutter can recognize and cut an object in the XY direction. Well this is a general idea about the 2D and the 3D cutters. Now let us talk about actuators. An actuator is an electromechanical device which is used in control applications. Let us now go through the devices, loudspeakers and headphones. In a loudspeaker or a headphone, sound is produced from a computer by passing the digital data through a DAC and then through an amplifier. Well this is a general idea about these two devices. Now let us talk about LCD and LED monitors. Most monitors and television sets are made using LCD technology. The front layer of the monitor is made up of liquid crystal diodes. The three colors which are grouped together to form pixels are red, green, and blue diodes. Modern LCD monitors are backlit using LED technology. Before the use of LEDs, LCD monitor used a CCFL as the backlighting method. Let us now go through the advantages of LED over CCFL technology. LEDs reach their maximum brightness almost immediately. LEDs give a wider light, CCFLs give a slightly yellowish tint. Monitors using ALED technology are much thinner than monitors using CCFL technology. 
LED technology is more reliable than CCFL technology. While all these points are the advantages of using LED technology over CCFL technology. Let us now go through the OLED technology. The OLED technology makes use of organic light emitting diodes. OLED is a self-contained system. It's possible to bend screens to any shape using OLED technology. The OLED technology has several advantages over the LED and LCD technologies. Let us now go through all these advantages. The structure of OLEDs are thinner, lighter, and more flexible than the structure used in LEDs or LCDs. OLEDs give a brighter light than LEDs. OLEDs do not require backlighting like LCD screens. OLEDs generate their own light. OLEDs use much less power than LCD screens. OLEDs have a very large field of view. While all these are the advantages of OLEDs over LED and LCD technologies. Now let us go through light projectors. Light projectors are used to project computer output onto large screens or even onto interactive whiteboards. They are often used in presentations and in multimedia applications. Let us now go through the types of light projectors. There are two types of light projectors in number. Let us now go through the first type which is the digital light projector. This type of light projector uses millions of micro mirrors. The number of micro mirrors and the way they are arranged on the DLP chip determines the resolution of the digital image. This is a general idea about the digital light projector. The next type of light projector is the LCD projector. The LCD projector is older than the DLP projector. A high intensity beam of light passes through an LCD display and then onto a screen. Well, this is a general idea about this type of light projector. The most important thing about these type of devices, which are output devices and also input devices is that they are used in supermarket checkouts. The most common devices used in checkouts are keyboards, monitors, speakers, printers, magnetic stripe readers, and touchscreens. Well, all the devices that we went through in this video were the output devices. In the last video we went through all the input devices. So we have successfully ended this chapter. If you need to download the notes for this subject, make sure to check out our official website. The link is there down below. Well that's basically it for this video. Thanks for watching. And as always, enjoy your presence in this intellectual zone.